when I'm at my happiest point, it's when I'm out training and doing what I love. And um, it's been it's been hard for me because you want to get back out there and you want to be training and racing, and you just have to be patient. Sarah's got a femoral neck stress fracture. That type of injury is usually to repetitive stress or overuse. Specifically, Sarah's injury was interesting and she ended up having a little bit of a bone density problem. So it developed a lot faster than you would normally see. Her run volume was actually pretty low, aside from her racing. Nobody ever really wants to get injured, but you know, for me, once I was able to accept that I was gonna be out for a long period of time, I just took a step back and I actually allowed myself to really relax. That was good for me. I mean, I think it's good for the body to really take a rest. It's allowed us to take a step back, my coach, my strength, um, training team, my rehab team, my chiropractor, and take a look at some of the other weaknesses that I have and really address those. Kind of interesting thing was in the process we found that she had a lot of uh, weakness around her ankle and specifically in her foot. So strengthening some of the smaller muscles in her feet uh, have been a key part in bringing her back and actually we've seen some changes into her hamstring engagement in her cycling as well with that process. So we've got her doing some pretty funny exercises but it's been really effective. put together to design a strength plan uh, to get her returning safely to her training, um, which is basically three sports, a cycle, run and swim. Making sure we implement a strength focus for her without injuring her, and making sure we set up specific plans to hold her back from uh, doing anything silly to injure the hip, so to speak. You know, like any athlete who's injured, you train the athlete, not the injury, so you have an opportunity to build with some really good strength foundations which you don't get a chance to in the season. I think as an athlete, we just want to get back out there and be training as fast as we possibly can. Everybody has been there to kind of keep me in line and tell me you know, when I'm pushing too hard and um, when I need to take a step back because you know, when you get an injury, you're injured for a reason and you have to take the recovery process really seriously. And while I do take that process really seriously, I'm also a little bit impatient and a little bit anxious to get back at it. And, you know, having somebody there to hold in the reins and keep me in check is a really good thing. So with Sarah, you've, you've got to play big brother. When you've got a fractured hip, you don't want an athlete walking around too much. So you need to have a progressive plan in place to get a back walking full body weight. So Fitbit was an opportunity for us to kind of be a bit like big brother and monitor how many steps she's taking uh, when we don't see her um, in the training or um, medical environment. So that was twofold. So it's kind of big brother as well as uh, a bit of sports science. In a novel way. I think communication is probably the most important part of this entire rehab process. If the communication isn't there, the best laid plans aren't going to make any difference if everybody's not on the same page. You know, the communication has been really key. If people aren't communicating with one another, you're not necessarily going to be maximizing, you know, the rehab process. And somebody could be pushing too hard or not pushing enough, and you know, if it's disjointed, you're just not really going to be getting the most out of it. So it's a pretty important part of this process. I would say my one piece of advice with injured athletes is to be patient. As hard, as frustrating as it is, I think it's just really important to respect the rehab process and I also think it's really important to take you know, the rehab and the strength and conditioning very seriously um, because it's going to put you in a position where you can come back and you can come back even stronger than you were before you got injured. And if you do it right, the outcome's gonna be great. And if you do it wrong, you're just gonna continue through a cycle of injury and having to you know, take time off and not really be doing what you love to do. So that would be my advice, as hard as it is. <laughs>